So far, we have only discussed problem settings involving binary classes. In this video, we will explore the problem setting involving more than two classes. Uh, for this, uh, a particular activation function referred to as a softmax activation function is very useful. So in this video, we will introduce the softmax activation uh, function as well as the problem of multinomial logistic regression. In the binary class setting, the labels are always drawn from minus one or plus one. However, in the multi-class setting, you might have multiple classes without a natural ordering among them. A classical example of this setting is a case of image classification. So, for example, the ImageNet dataset might contain 1000 categories corresponding to different categories of images, such as like a truck or a carrot or a cat. And similarly, uh, in language models, uh, you are trying to predict the next word in a sentence. So again, uh, this, here you have a very large number of categories e and each category corresponds to the identifier of the word, of a word. In each of these cases, you can see that you have multiple classes and there is no natural ordering among the different classes. Now models like logistic regression are naturally designed to predict two classes. The two class case is a, a significant simplification because you can always impose an, an arbitrary ordering between the different classes. So uh, logistic regression uh, is a probabilistic model that produces probabilities of the two outcomes of a binary class. Multinomial logistic regression is a generalization of this concept. It produces probabilities of multiple outcomes. So clearly, in order to produce probabilities of multiple outcomes, we need an activation function with a vector output of probabilities. So in this case, the softmax activation function is a vector-based generalization of the sigmoid activation function used in logistic regression. And that is one of the reasons why the multinomial logistic regression technique is also referred to as the softmax classifier. So before we discuss multinomial logistic regression, we will introduce the softmax activation function. The softmax activation function is a natural vector-centric generalization of the scalar to scalar sigmoid activation. It is essentially a vector to vector function. So recall that your logistic sigmoid activation function was obtained by uh, taking the value v, uh, exponentiating it, the exponential is the negative of that value, and then one plus exponentiation of the negative of that value gives you the activation. So this always gives you a value between zero and one. In the case of sigmoid activation, you have k real values, v1 through vk. Uh, note that now instead of one argument, you have k argument. So it's a vector argument. And your output is also a vector of size k. So each element in the vector is proportional to the exponentiation of vi. The ith element is proportional to the exponentiation of vi. In addition, you have a normalization constant which ensures that the elements of the output all sum to 1. So the idea here is that you have a vector of k outputs which correspond to k different probabilities. And as we'll see, these k probabilities will correspond to the probabilities, the predicted probabilities of the k classes. So uh, how does the uh, softmax activation function relate to the sigmoid? So the binary case of using sigmoid v is identical to using the two element softmax activation with arguments v and 0. Uh, I will leave this as an exercise for, the, uh, for you. It's relatively easy to show. So what this also means is that when we use softmax activation in order to perform multinomial logistic regression, what we can show is that multinomial logistic regression with two elements softmax is equivalent to binary logistic regression. So now uh, we need to also discuss what kinds of loss functions are used with the softmax. 
Now the softmax activation function is used almost exclusively in the output layer and this is true whether we are working with single layer networks or multi layer networks and in almost all cases it is paired with cross entropy loss. So even though in this particular lecture we will only discuss a, a, a case where you have a fairly simple logistic regression classifier many of the results in this uh, video will actually generalize to uh, arbitrary neural networks where you are trying to compute the derivative of the softmax function. Now, uh, what is the cross entropy loss? In the case of binary logistic regression, uh, the cross entropy loss was given by the negative logarithm of the probability of the observed class. You can naturally generalize this to multiple classes where you simply uh, use the negative logarithm or the probability of the correct class. Note that the probability distribution among incorrect classes has no effect at least on the loss function. So <clears throat> now uh, let's look at uh, what happens, uh, how we can express this cross entropy loss in terms of the real value vi on which you are applying the activation function. So you have the softmax probability vector uh, y1 through yk which is given by this expression uh, given by the exponentiations of the uh, uh, values of the argument of the softmax. So the uh, cross entropy loss is given by minus log yc where c is the index of the correct class. Now if you work out the detail, if you express this in terms of the pre-activation values, we want to express this into the pre-activation values v1 through vk, you can easily show that the cross entropy loss is given by minus vci plus the logarithm of the sum of the, these, uh, these exponentiated values. That is essentially your normalization constant that you are using in order to ensure that the softmax activation values the sum to 1. So since the uh, softmax is almost always paired with cross entropy loss, uh, we can actually directly estimate the derivative of this loss function with respect to this pre-activation value vi and this result will be useful not just for multinomial logistic regression but it will it is generally true it, it will generally be useful across a variety of multi-layer neural networks where you are using softmax activation because in almost all of those cases you are you will be pairing the softmax activation function with the cross entropy loss so what do we need to do? So essentially this loss function as we already saw in the previous slide, it is expressed in terms of the pre-activation values as minus VCI plus log of the normalization constant. So we can essentially differentiate this uh, with respect uh, to VI and when we differentiate this with respect to VI, it is easy to show that the loss derivative is given by the expression at the bottom of the slide. So basic, basically it is best expressed in terms of the post activation values which are the probabilities y1 through yk and if uh, uh, so, so the uh, partial derivative of the loss with respect to vr is given by uh, yr minus 1 if r is the correct class and it is given by yr if r is not the correct class. So, so now that we have set up the loss derivative of the softmax, we are now ready to introduce the multinomial logistic regression classifier, its neural model, and then we'll see how we can use this loss derivative in order to derive the gradient descent steps. So in multinomial logistic regression, the architecture is somewhat different from the architectures that we have seen so far. Here, uh, rather than having a single weight vector, uh, which is what we used for binary classes, we have k different weight vectors. So the weight vector wi is, uh, belongs to the class i. Ideally, what you want to do is that for an instance that, that belongs to the ith class, you want to ensure that the dot product between the, uh, the weight vector of that class and the training instance is as large as possible. 
so you want to learn the k parameter vectors such that this property is satisfied so obviously you need a way to quantify uh, when a particular weight vector uh, is, is winning over the other weight vectors and the way in which we do it is by using a probabilistic model so what we do is that in the hidden layer in the first layer of the model we learn a real valued score for the rth class so this real valued score for the rth class is given by the dot product of the weight vector for that class multiplied by the training instance so dot product between the training instance and the weight vector for that class now uh, what you do is that you uh, these scores already tell you which class is desired obviously uh, if 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 a class is predicted to be the desirable one then it will have a high real valued score but you convert it to a probability by using softmax activation by converting it to probability by using softmax activation you can actually get a soft probabilistic prediction although you can also pick the class with the largest probability value and predict it to be the relevant one so, uh, so, so let's see how we can compute the derivative of this loss. So, so here you have cross entropy loss, which is minus log of the probability of the correct class. So for gradient descent, we need to compute the gradient of the loss with respect to the weight vector. Now recall that we, uh, in two slides earlier, we had already computed the gradient of the loss with respect to the pre-activation value. This is the expression at the bottom end, and this expression will come out to be very useful. So now, what we do is that to compute the gradient of loss with respect to the weight vector, we can use a chain rule of differential calculus, where we can uh, compute the partial der derivative with, res with respect to each pre-activation value, and then compute the gradient of the pre-activation value with respect to the weight vector. Now, the, an important point is that the gradient of the, of the pre-activation value with respect to a weight vector is zero for all of the k terms other than the class, specific class to which that pre-activation value belongs. So you'll have a whole lot of zero terms and you'll be left with only one term uh, in this expression and the gradient of the pre-activation value with respect to the weight vector is simply the training instance. The reason is that the pre-activation value is simply the dot product between the weight vector and the training instance. So when you compute the gradient, all you get is the training instance. And the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the pre-activation value, we, are, we already computed in the previous slide. So when you substitute that in, here you get the, uh, the, the, the loss derivative for uh, the training instance. So once you have the loss derivative, now you, we can easily compute the gradient descent steps for the softmax uh, for the multinomial logistic regression classifier. So essentially, uh, now what you need to do is that you would need to update each separator uh, based on the gradient of the loss function with respect to that separator. And since we have already computed what the gradient of the loss function with respect to the separator is, you can see that this is essentially the update, the gradient descent update for each of the weight vectors. So, so note that we will have to update each of the k separators uh, based on the uh, bottom formula. So th this is essentially uh, a, a direct generalization of logistic regression. And in fact, what you can show is that if you apply the softmax classifier with two classes, you will obtain two weight vectors, W1 and W2, and they will satisfy the relationship W1 is equal to minus W2. And this separator will be the same one obtained by using binary log logistic regression, uh, regression, which we discussed in the previous lec lecture. So the book also contains uh, details of the multiclass perceptron and Western Watkins SVM. Now this cross entropy loss and the softmax, they are all, almost always paired in the output layer for all types of neural network architectures. So, so many of the calculus derivation of the previous slides, they are actually repeatedly used in different settings. So in particular, the derivation of the loss function with respect to the pre-activation value, it's a useful intermediate result which should be uh, probably be committed to memory because you'll be using it at many places. Uh, that's the bottom formula over here.